Hello dear readers and subscribers, welcome to another video with some practical career advice for artists and in this video we'll be taking on artist websites. When it comes to artist websites it can often be very tricky to find adequate and industry approved information online or when you're discussing with some other artists who are also in search to find the ideal way to set up their artist's website. One artist will say you have to set it up this way, the other will set it up in another way and say that that's the way to go. So for this video we have done tons of work and research to give you a definitive answer and tutorial how you have to set up your artist website. Today with this video and possibly in less than an hour time you will be able to set up your website the industry approved way in line with the unwritten rules in the art world because in the end your artist website will make a difference and when following this tutorial your chances for success will be optimal. Before we start creating our artist website, we must identify what we have to create. And for this, as a contemporary art platform and art gallery, we have, and especially for this video, we have conducted a lot of research and have a lot of experience when it comes to artist websites. And after visiting and analyzing over a hundred artist websites by successful mid-career and emerging artists, you'll notice that they all have the same pages, the same design and the same feeling. Is this a coincidence? Not at all. Because in fact there are very strict rules or expectations when it comes to artist websites. And we'll illustrate this with some clear-cut examples before we proceed to creating the website. If you have already seen one of our previous videos concerning artist websites, feel free to move forward in this video to the tutorial where we get started designing the website. But nevertheless, I would advise you to run it through so that you know why we're doing this and how we should do it for ourselves. So let's discuss this structure, starting off with the overall look and design of these websites. Sometimes it is expected of artists to be, for instance here with Catherine McNaughton, to be very adventurous with their work, to be very refreshing uh, and to show their personality. However, sometimes in the art world it is expected that you are very professional formal and the latter is the desired behavior and attitude for your artist website. If you look at all these artist websites you can see that they all have a similar design. They have a plain white background and their text is quite small and they use a black or dark gray font but the design is always quite minimal. It's, it's very clean. An original design can sometimes work however it is an unnecessary risk because only if you are a graphic designer or have a graphic designer that knows the subtle differences of what is possible, of what is acceptable, then it could work, but it is kind of a risk. So instead of going for crazy designs or trying to look like a big company or platform with a logo, etc., act as if you're not trying at all, which is actually a lot harder than it sounds to make it uh, still look good. But no worries, we'll assist you further in designing your websites in our next chapter. Now, the tree must have pages. This is very important and the thing that we're gonna start off with. So the thing you need to understand is an artist website is your publicly accessible portfolio. It is your professional resume and it's also your online business card. And this results in the following three pages. An overview of your works, of your resume and your so-called business card, your email address. And if we hook, have a look at all these uh, different artist websites, we see the same pages. Works, resume, contacts. Works, resume, contacts. Here we have resume, text. This is an additional page, we'll get to that later. Contact and on the home page, works. And we can go on uh, here on the home page as well. The works about with the artist resume and contacts. And then here we enter some websites from some more established artists, but also those have works. Uh, here there is the resume and biography and contacts. And the list goes on. So these are the pages that we'll have to create. A page showcasing your works. This could be on your homepage. A reasoned and representative selection of the artist's best works and installation views. And additionally, sometimes you could include some metadata for instance, here we have the metadata from the works, but you don't want to add any additional text to it. Then the following page is the artist resume, 
And here with the artist resumes, we have actually made another video with the unwritten rules when it comes to artist resumes. So make sure to watch that video next so you can set up your resume the right way. But we'll illustrate it in our tutorial even further. So this is actually not a, a full on written text or an artist statement. However, it is a list with factual information and bullet points, always mentioning the same information in the same structure where you were born, where you live and work, your education, your exhibition history, and then also collections, um, awards, uh, here's some publications and so forth. So these are always the same type of things we mention in the same uh, structure. So that's how uh, you should set up your info page, but we'll get to that later because when we also have a look at uh, the websites of uh, established artists, you'll see uh, of uh, established galleries and you go to an artist, you'll see that they do the same thing. We have the selected works and then we're here we have the biography with the resume. And if you look, once again, they use the exact same structure. This is, this is one of those unwritten rules that you can identify immediately if you know them and if they see that you apply them to, they will take you seriously because you know what you are doing. Then when it comes to uh, your contact page, this is very, very straightforward. Um, simply leave your uh, email address or the contact information of your galleries. Um, even this contact page that I really like, simply a button email and we're sending an email to the artist. You could also add a button to your uh, newsletter, but this is not necessary. And I would say that I prefer to just have your email address and not use a um, contact form because that comes across a bit more corporate. Um, so just your email address, that will do the trick. Now with the optional pages, and these are some pages you could add once you come a bit more established. You could, for instance, add a page with texts. Here there is an overview of the texts and uh, publications and possibly you could add a hyperlink to the online PDF file or the online location of the publication. Another opportunity is to have uh, a page with your uh, monographic publications. Here it is mentioned at books. And to conclude, you could also have a page with news to communicate your uh, exhibitions. And you'll see with the more established uh, artists, this becomes uh, more of a focal point. Now, one more thing before we set up our artist website is which website builder we should use. We have actually written an article in which we shortlisted the top four best website builders for artists today. We've conducted a full research analyzing the 12 most popular and most commonly used uh, website builders and identified which ones are the best for these purposes for this type of website for artists. And the results were that Squarespace was number one because it is comes at a terrific price. It's very easy to use, very easy to set up. And the overall quality and the design is the best there is for this price point and this ease of use. So feel free to read that article if you are in doubt. And if you go for Squarespace, uh, make sure to use our promo code CONTEMPORARY10 to get 10% off as well. And by doing so, you will be supporting this free tutorial and free information so that we can continue to make these videos. Now, very important, we're gonna start setting up our website in Squarespace, but we must use the link in the description below or in the pinned comment or in the article, because this will bring us to the same page, which will be our starting point. And that way Squarespace will know that we have sent you through. So we're all set, let's get started. Now, it is time to design our website with Squarespace. And the starting point for this tutorial, if you clicked the link in the description or in the pinned comment or the link in our article online, you'll arrive at this page, which is the Squarespace template page. We're going to filter the page by topic, clicking art and design, and the type, we're gonna select portfolio. Now we get a cross reference of all their templates that are uh, created to showcase a portfolio in art and design. So the one that will be our starting point for this tutorial is Falodu. You can control F, enter it and or just scroll down until you see this page. 
This website, is uh, this template, is actually by a landscape photographer. And the main reason that we will take this um, template as a starting point is because of the structure that we mentioned earlier, the three pages that we need to have. A work page, an about page where you can have your resume and a contact page. So we're gonna click start with this design. Now it is time to create your account. And of course, there are various ways to do this. If you don't want to receive emails, you can click here and continue with your Google account or uh, your Apple account, or you can also go for more options. I'm gonna go with my Google account, contemporary art issue, and we're already here setting things up for our website. So, we arrive at this screen, welcome to your site. And here they ask us what we would like to call our site. And here it is very important that you call your website by your name. Don't start to invent brand names for your artistic practice. We are not a business, artists are people. And people have names. And your name, your persona will be kind of your brand in the art world. So. Site title, here you write down your name and surname, click continue. And here there is a brief tutorial on how you should use the editor, but that's what I'm here for. So we can just click next, next, and next. Here we have the assistant, you can simply close this because I will be your assistant today. And now we are in the uh, Squarespace website builder to edit this template. So the first thing that we're going to uh, work on are the pages of our website. So here you have an overview of the pages we have. We have our home page. It is here at not linked, um, meaning that it doesn't show up here in your header menu. That's perfectly fine if they would click on this button on your name surname, they will navigate back to the home page. So you can still navigate to the home page without having it here in the uh, menu. Then we have the work page, the about page, and the contact page. You might have noticed that this work page has these four squares instead of uh, this um, page icon. This is because this is a portfolio page and not a blank page. Here we see the portfolio settings. So the difference between a portfolio page and uh, a simple uh, blank page is that with a portfolio page, you can actually navigate to various uh, other pages. So it's a main navigation page to uh, navigate to some other pages. But for this video and with artist websites in general, we always try to organize our work as um, clear as possible. So I'm actually going to delete this page we're gonna create a blank page and call this one selected works. The great thing about Squarespace is how easy it is to get all the um, technical information uh, right about your website. Here, everything is already filled in correctly, the page title, the navigation title, and your URL slug. And if you go to your SEO settings, everything is looking fine as well, so they will Take the name of the page as your title. And then you can uh, write down in the description, for instance, um, a selection of works by name, surname. You could add a social image. This means if you would share your uh, web page to um, Facebook, then the image that you enter here will show up, but that's not really necessary. Uh, you could also do some advanced CSS, but we're gonna stay clear of those things in this video because it's not necessary for the purposes of an artist website. Click save, we're gonna do the same things with the about page. Here we're all good. Site title is about. Here we can write down um, artists resume of name, surname, save. Move the about page back here and the contact page, the exact same thing, SEO, contacts, and here we write down contact the artist, name, surname. Let's move 
this back here. So all our pages are uh, all set. So now it's actually time to change the settings of our design, which happens here. Site styles. Another way to um, uh, get to this point is simply if we were here and we want to edit our site, to click here, site styles. And here we can change um, the look and uh, design of our site in one place simply by selecting our, um, our fonts, etc. Um, as we've discussed before, the artist website uh, needs to be clean, minimal, professional, and a little bit uh, elusive. So we're gonna go for a white backdrop, a black font, and preferably a small size of font and uh, a trendy looking uh, font. Here at Global Text Styles, you can set your font family. So here they have Gourmand. We can also browse all fonts. Um, I'm actually a, a really big fan of using Times New Roman. Um, this is kind of obsolete um, uh, family uh, when it comes to fonts. However, it works really well and, and it looks really professional if you use this font in a minimal design. Uh, I really like this combination and it simply does the trick. So let's go for Times New Roman. Then the size. Let's put our heading to 1.5. All of them. 1.5. Let's go back, the paragraphs, Times New Roman, now it's in our style guide, so it's easy. And we can set the paragraph size, I would say 0.8, really want it to be um, rather small. Don't worry too much about the small fonts, um, it's still very easy to read and it looks a lot better in, uh, when I use a small font instead, a very large one. You don't have to worry about uh, um, people not being able to read well or uh, to see well, because generally speaking in the art world, 90% of the people will have a very good eye, literally and figuratively speaking. So we go back. Now we go back and in site styles, you could also change the colors of your website, but with this template, all the colors are the ones that we need. Could also have some animations, but that's not very professional. So here it is pre-selected as none, which is perfect. Then also the spacing on your website. Personally, I like um, to have a bit uh, narrower site uh, margins uh, set to two. Um, and then you could also change the width, the maximum width of your website. And I believe 1600 pixels is perfect. All right, then you also have buttons and image blocks, but you don't have to uh, make any changes there. So now we're gonna start designing our site. And now when it comes to our footer, we're going to edit it simply by deleting it. A footer is very uh, important when you are, for instance, uh, a big business, because then you need to mention some copyright information, possibly some contact information, um, a newsletter, but that's, not really necessary with artists at websites. So we want to act as if we're not trying, keep it very simple, very formal. All the information will be at the uh, contact uh, section. So we can simply um, remove that, um, that footer. Now, we're gonna click exit, navigate to home, and we're gonna start with our home page. The current homepage showcases uh, talk, uh, like a slider, uh, describes um, the photographer's practice and also has a button to the series. That's a bit too advanced actually, we don't need that much. So we're going to start with removing the sections we currently have. So you navigate here, it goes very intuitively this uh, editor, it almost does not have any um, learning curve. Here you can simply click add section and now you have, uh, when you want to add a section, you have all these uh, possible pre-made um, sections. Um, the most important ones will be text and uh, images. So here we're just gonna go to images. 
you have uh, a number of um, possible uh, settings to show your images. Um, the one that I really like is this one. The only thing we'll have to change if we um, click on this image here, we go to the design and instead of using round corners, we're going to set this corner radius to zero to have nice squared corners. So this is um, um, our section. So, and if you want to edit the image, then you have to click to the image and can change the image. But first we're going to make a small change to this uh, section as well. We're going to click edit section. And here we have some uh, design options. The uh, height will be set to small and the alignment to the top. This way, if we go to our mobile view, it will, won't take up that much place and it is outlined to the top. So we're a bit closer to our header. Now let's um, change this image. Um, on your homepage, you want to make a very good impression, of course. Um, we have a page dedicated for our selected works. So on the home page, I would advise you to share your very best installation views. If you don't have any terrific installation views, I would advise you to make your selected works page your home page. The way to do this is simply to go here, go to the settings of selected work page and click set as home page. As soon as you've done this, the selected works page is the home page and here you can click delete. But in this um, uh, example, we're gonna uh, use the installation views on the home page. So we have a separate home page. Click close and edit the home page. So we added this, um, this image. Um, it is time to um, make it an art related image, of course. For this um, tutorial, I will simply use a couple of my um, uh, own uh, works of my own installation views as an artist. So um, I'm going to share some of my uh, works uh, for the first time here on the channel. And I'm going to upload this image from uh, my previous show. There, perfect. If you have a lot of great installation views, that's uh, even better, then you can simply press this button to duplicate this entire section and add a second one. Change, here we're gonna replace it with another image, upload file, and we're going to share this installation view from my latest show in Paris. Now we're gonna duplicate for another installation view, replace, upload file, and enter this installation view, once again, duplicate, replace, upload file, and we'll have this installation view added to the home page. And one more. And this as the final uh, installation view for this home page. So if we have a look now, let's save our home page. We're gonna click exit. And if we exit and we click this button here, we get to see how our site looks if it would be published and live. So this is how it looks like. And on mobile, it looks perfect as well. Excellent. Now, if I see this, um, this header, there are still one or two changes. This is a little bit too big in my opinion, and these are arguably a little bit too small uh, as buttons. So we're gonna quickly make some changes. Go back to style, fonts. We go to assign styles. Here the site title. We see that this is still set at two. We'll set it at one five. And then uh, the uh, mobile site title as well, or maybe, yes, 1.5. Then the site navigation will go custom and set it at 1.1. One, one. Yes, this, this looks more in balance to me. So 1.5 for the um, name surname and then for the navigation menu 1.1. Save and click exit. 
Okay, now it is time to change our selected works page. We'll click edit and we're going to add a section. Here on the selected works page, there are a number of possibilities, um, also dependent on how you would like to organize them. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna go for a very straightforward, clear and concise way to showcase your portfolio on your website without overcomplicating things. If you would like to see different ways how to categorize and organize your works on your website, for instance, by series or um, uh, chronologically or um, uh, per project, uh, feel free to leave a comment and we'll make another video um, to show you uh, what else you could do to organize your work with Squarespace. Once again, we're gonna navigate to images and we're gonna select a simple image gallery. We're going to edit the gallery remove the following pictures and start uploading our own pictures. I'll quickly upload a few of my works and then I'll get back to you when they're uploaded. So I have uploaded a bunch of my uh, charcoal drawings and here we can um, move them around to uh, organize them and I would suggest for this type of portfolio to organize them chronologically. So that's what we're going to do here. So this looks about right. Very important with your works if you um, share your portfolio is to mention the metadata of your works. And the formula or the way you should mention uh, the metadata is by writing down the title, uh, the year in which it was made, point, and then the medium on surface, I'm gonna write it down like this. And then I put a line and then the dimensions. So the way it would look for instance with this picture is Jep Tree, which is its title, 2022, charcoal on paper mounted on panel, and then the dimensions, Centimeter. You could also possibly add them here in inch. Now we have all the inputs. I'm going to click close, but the design is not right yet. The images do not fit in these things and it's a little bit sloppy. So we're going to go to edit section and here we can select the gallery type. You could go for a grid. Um, you also have like these masonry grids, so you can see the artworks in full. However, the one that I really like uh, um, for this type of, um, of gallery is the simple slideshow. Here we see the uh, artwork and only the one artwork. Thumbnails, yes. Captions, yes. We can set this to large or to medium, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna set this to large for this um, uh, slideshow. So now we have um, the artwork, we have the metadata, and here they can navigate further to see what other works you have. And you also have the errors to navigate. So this is actually perfect. This is a perfect example of a concise and powerful um, artist portfolio online. It's very professional, it's very formal, and you leave them wanting for more. You do not share all your work. It's, it's very convenient um, to use and to see what you create, what works um, um, you have created so far. So it's, it's the perfect uh, solution and it works and looks really good. We're gonna click save and let's click exit. Click this button to see the website as if it's live. And here we see how beautiful it is organized. Name, uh, surname, here we have the navigation menu. And here in full, we have the artworks. So we're gonna go to the about page now and we're gonna click edit. Here, we're gonna uh, remove everything we have in the section and we're gonna add blocks ourselves. We're gonna click a basic text block. Here you can make the text block bigger or smaller. I'm gonna go for this size make it a bit bigger. And here we're gonna enter our uh, artist resume. 
If you haven't set up your artist resume yet in a separate document, please make sure to watch our video on how to create a professional artist resume so that you uh, use the unwritten rules for artist resumes and so that you can simply copy and paste it to your website, which is what I'm about to do right now. Perfect. The, the way it looks now is already uh, good enough. So this would perfectly work fine. Just the information they absolutely require, which is your artist resume written following the structure for artist resume. So if you would publish your uh, about page uh, this way, you're all good. However, if you would like to share some more information, for instance, a small text about your work, you could, for instance, move your resume to this side of the page like this. We're going to add a block, another text block like this. And here we could have our biography, a short biography. I'm going to copy and paste like this. This is perfect. So now we have a, a biography and the uh, artist resume. Uh, this is actually perfect. This does not need any further changes. You could um, change the design a little bit more if you want, uh, but this does the trick. So we're gonna click save. That's two out of the three must have pages done. So the only thing we still need to finish is the contact page. We're gonna go to the contact page, click edit. We're gonna delete everything once again. Add block, text. We're gonna write our text down. So um, here I would simply write down your, um, uh, your email address, which could be name, surname at gmail.com. Then here you could also add uh, a button to join them, your newsletter. Instead of using a fancy form uh, or uh, a newsletter uh, service, you can simply write down newsletter, go here to add a hyperlink, click this button, make sure they send it to you, subject newsletter, and then the body, I would like to subscribe to the mailing list and receive updates on upcoming exhibitions and projects just like that click save apply and then we could also add a link to our instagram here you can simply copy your instagram handle apply and then we have another link and you could also um, add the uh, information of your galleries adding another block moving it to the middle and write down represented by and here you can enter all the information of your galleries which is what I'm going to do like this perfect if you don't have um, galleries representing you you can simply remove it and just keep it with uh, the information here or if you want to add a picture maybe you could move this over here and if you have a nice studio picture, don't use an unprofessional portrait picture. It is not your Facebook page. It is your uh, professional artist website. So try to um, keep, it, um, keep it clean and, and uh, uh, professional. And I'm going to upload a studio picture. And the studio picture for this website is, of course, the one with our loyal studio assistant who isn't in this video. And we're going to align it here. Perfect. So now we're actually all set. It's already done. We're going to click save. Exit. We're going to have a final look at our website, how it looks live. So the contact page, this is perfect. It's very clean. It's very minimal. It's, it looks really well. It, it does the trick. We have the email address, the newsletter, the Instagram. We have our galleries. This will lift the spirits of your galleries and trust in you so that you're actually collaborating that you're working together and it will also increase the um, uh, credibility of you as an artist because they see that they have um, uh, galleries working and investing in you the about page perfect very factual only text in a small nice font they have all the information they need and nothing more 
and then the selected works page of course with our nice slideshow that works perfectly excellent so this is our website and it took us just a couple of minutes to set it up and there's no reason why you would not be able to set it up in this way so definitely go for it we can have a quick check on our mobile as well navigate to the selected works for instance works perfectly here as well on the mobile page I'm gonna go to the about page without having to do any changes to the responsiveness everything is already in order this is perfect and then the contact page here as well perfect nothing more that we need to change so now it is time to go live with our website and the way to do this is to go to this uh, little um, uh, pop-up here at the bottom of the screen that says that your trial ends in 14 days upgrade now to get the most out of your site so you can have it for 14 days but we'll have to go live here select a plan the great thing with artist websites is that we don't need all these fancy tricks um, that the other uh, packets have we don't need uh, business um, subscription nor do we need a web shop so we don't need to com the commerce um, uh, subscription we can simply go for the um, personal plan which is priced at 16 per month so we're gonna select this and here it's the price is a bit higher because of the Belgium VAT if you go to uh, United States or wherever you are you'll see the normal price $192 a year for a perfect functioning well-made and easy to use artist website at $16 a month so here you can enter your um, credit card information or your MasterCard information and simply save and continue to go live. Don't forget to use our promo code CONTEMPORARY10 to get 10% off. So doing so, this terrific price will be even better with our promo code. Good luck and congratulations with your brand new website. So to conclude, some final thoughts and advice when it comes to artist websites is that in fact it is very straightforward and easy to set them up if you have the right information of course. If you set up your website this way it will have a positive effect on your career. The thing is in the art world it is often about appearances and when they are interested in you your website will be the first Google search result when they look for it. So we can control the thing they get to see and we must make sure that they see are at our best. Try to elevate our level or even try to look more successful than we actually are, which will lead to actual real successes. Feel free to read the full article to go through all the information and a bit more than I've discussed in this video to really fresh up all the knowledge and all the things you need to pay attention to. And if you want to learn more about career advice uh, for artists, definitely have a look at our other articles and videos for artists as well. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Feel free to watch our video on the six steps to become a successful self-taught artist next. Support us on Patreon and please consider subscribing to stay posted for more contemporary art. Bye.